Hello and welcome to another Cape May Mermaid video. Uh, this is a jewelry haul from this weekend. Uh, had a fantastic uh, weekend, I would say, with the sourcing. Um, even at some unusual places that uh, I was able to source, uh, including a penny party, which uh, I was able to get this beautiful bracelet right here. We'll start with that one. This one is uh, signed Alva Studios. And if you've never been to a penny party, I, I don't I don't think they're everywhere. They're just certain um, places that you go, and a lot of people have never heard of them. But they are uh, basically you get a hundred tickets in an envelope for usually for a dollar, but in this case it was two dollars, which is perfectly fine because it's still reasonably priced vintage items uh, in terms of you have to put them in cups and you know it gets drawn. This is a Sarah Coventry ladybug. Isn't that cute? So that was really um, an enjoyable thing to do and an interesting way to source. And maybe that's not available everywhere, but hey, if you do see one, at least you have somewhat of an idea that you can get some good stuff there. Now, of course, I also have my usual uh, thrift stores and yard sales and flea markets and anything, you know, any place you can get vintage items. But I do get that question a lot, where do you get your stuff? Most, mostly local, occasionally uh, on the internet. Uh, I, I like to go on whatnot just as much for selling and buying, so. These are really neat clip-ons. They have that chain link, uh, nice flat gold tone look to them. And if you haven't found me on Whatnot yet, I will be putting a link, of course, in the description so you can find me. Most of these items will uh, end up being uh, sold on Whatnot auctions. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you subscribe and like, and you know the drill. <laughs> it would mean a lot to me, and I'd appreciate it very much. These are clip-ons. They're like a seed pod. Very unique finds there. I hope you enjoy my videos. I, I do try to, uh, to have some very... Uh, unique treasures that uh, I can share with somebody, you know, I say something to my family, hey, you know, check out what I got. And they kind of look at me like I'm crazy. These are post back earrings. They're really neat. <laughs> so I like to share with people that are interested in seeing the same things as me on these lovely treasure hunts. It's very exciting. This is, um, it has a C with a circle, which usually means copyright. Um, and next to it, you can't really make out a hallmark. So I'm thinking that either it worn off or it wasn't stamped well enough. But if anyone is familiar with um, the maker of this, the other one that I was able to find online, they said it was Koro. I don't know. I uh, Koro's usually clearly marked, you know, at Coro. So, yeah, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's definitely a very pretty piece, though. Here's a kitty. An enamel kitty. I really like that one. Lots of, lots of fun treasures here. These are post-back earrings. It was what I would refer to as a successful week. <laughs> These are signed 
or should I say marked, made in West Germany. Very beautiful clip-on earrings. Like a pretty blue color. This one, even though it's a more modern charm bracelet, it is signed as well. It's on the main charm. There it is. Got a few Chicos this uh, this weekend. That's a Chicos necklace. These are really neat to find. They have the uh, the sticker on the back saying where it's from and uh, Creations by Francis. These are uh, vintage, more larger, like a uh, collage style brooch. And they are collectible. They really have some very unique um, designs to them. Love the vibrant colors in this one. This is really cool. It looks like a sea urchin, kind of. Lots of sign stuff this weekend. Has its original um, tag on there. Beautiful enamel necklace. So you know that's never been worn because ain't nobody gonna have a tag on there and wear it. So this is a Betsy Johnson piece. All the Betsy Johnson pieces usually go for some pretty good money so I always pick up any Betsy Johnson I see I got a couple pieces this weekend with Betsy Johnson as you can see by that tag that lovely pink tag and this one is a bracelet And it'll even it'll have the spelled out on one side, and it'll have the initials on the other. Uh, if you don't see it with the pink tag, this is a little charm bracelet. See a lot of red hat stuff around here. Um, I uh, I usually will grab it, especially if it has like rhinestones and stuff. <clears throat> hey, kitty. They heard you last time. You don't have to tell them this time, too. <laughs> she got louder. <laughs> and these ones are also signed. Look at the colors in that one. What a bangle. Many bangles this weekend. Marbled green. Black swirl. The colors are definitely um, very sought after. I find uh, I get a lot of requests for uh, the colorful Lucite bracelets. This is an Avon piece. Vintage Avon definitely has a, a place in people's hearts because they request it quite frequently. I 
I did grab a couple cufflinks. I don't always grab cufflinks, but when they have rhinestones or they're unique in some way or signed, I'll usually grab them. Something about them special, I'll, I'll usually say, hey, you know, I gotta have that one. Anything that has like that Roman or Caesar look to it. You know, these do have the um, patent on the one side there. So I grabbed those. This one's a, a little book locket brooch. These are um, posts with the clip back. Nice large earrings. I had to grab the very rich gold tone seashells, of course. Can't not. <laughs> Look at all these fun goodies. Yes, it was, it was very successful this weekend. Very, very successful. This is neat. It's got the rhinestones and the, the glasses brooch. The elephant with the trunk up. This is a tie clip and it is a, a swank with a shovel. Some clip on earrings. I like to grab the vintage clip ons. This one has a <clears throat> that large, um, like it looks like glass maybe. A crystal ball <laughs> in the center. Here's a uh, a wooden pendant or brooch. Kitties in the windowsill, watching a bird. Very detailed brooch. And that is signed LCI. Always got to pick up the turquoise inlay. Love that. I always grab all the brasses and the mixed metals. They definitely have a place in my heart. These are some nice enamel uh, screw back earrings. Now this is not signed, but I could, I could find one just like it. There's the back. They had theirs listed at uh, 35, so. I'll probably go a lot less than that, but it gives me kind of a jumping off point of where I don't want to go over. Usually when I list things as a starting bid, I will put it for a lot less than the lowest price I see um, when I go searching for it. So I'll significantly start the auction lower than, like if let's say, Macari, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, all have the same thing and you know like the lowest one is 30 i'm probably not going to put it for more than 15 if not lower than that so it does give people the opportunity um to resell from whatnot items because it's a faster sell on whatnot than it is on the other platforms but you will get more money on the other platforms. So, <laughs> depends on what you are able to do. If you're able to grab a lot of items fast, then a faster turnaround would definitely make more sense. This is so cool. Gator hinge. 
that it's just really fun. And I did come across two um, Malachite bracelets this weekend. They're a little different in uh, shape. This has more of a rounded edge to it. And this one's more inlay flat going around. This is a very pretty uh, green beaded bracelet. Lots of details, or necklace rather, sorry. <laughs> it is uh, a signed 2028 piece. Kind of a take on the, the 1928, but now it's 2028. This has a safety chain and it is uh, marked Hong Kong. So I came across this one, and this one is a signed Miriam Haskell piece. Now the problem is, is yes, the, the safety chain is broken, but definitely worth fixing. Uh, most Miriam Haskell bracelets uh, tend to, to go for 100 to 200 plus dollars. So I wouldn't want to not get it just because of um, a minor flaw. Definitely worth fixing, in my opinion. <laughs> and one of my first jobs was uh, working at a gift shop in Stone Harbor. And they taught me how to make um, anklets and bracelets and necklaces by chain. They sold chain by the inch, and um, that was a good thing I learned. This is a beautiful vintage heart necklace. It's, um, I looked it up. There's a lot of them that are faux, and then there's, you know, the glass ones with the, um, from Swarovski. And they are 18 karat gold plated. The only problem is, is it has one defect. That's probably going to drive me nuts. <laughs> right there. And otherwise they are quite valuable. Unfortunately it does have that one little spot. And I wonder if that is uh, fixable. I'm certainly willing to try. Let's put it that way. <laughs> certainly, certainly willing to try. This is the coolest bracelet. Has the little uh, wheat pennies that make up the cuff. That would be such a cute gift for a coin collector. And the size of it looks like it might fit um, a man. That's a pretty large cuff there. Love seeing those though, very fun. Let's not miss the scarab wreath over here. Love to see the scarab jewelry. I always grab it every time I see it. Uh, last week I uh, had one similar to this one in my uh, shop and it sold. So here's another one. And this one has little hearts on the shirt. Good timing for Valentine's Day. Another copper cuff. This one is a signed uh, piece. It is a, a butterfly that can be either a pendant uh, or you can clip it on like a brooch. And it's uh, Rebecca Collins. I've seen some of those uh, pretty high priced, up to like $90. It's kind of wild, the, the things like, but looking at that piece, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pictured that as being that much. Oh, vintage. 
vintage brooch. This is a beautiful bracelet. It's not signed, unfortunately. Is so detailed you can see every vein to the leaf. That says bump in there. I didn't see that earlier. It says Pisces. Okay. Pisces. These are some clip ons. They have a nice vibrant silver tone to them. Reflect off. Another bracelet I feel that should have been signed because it's very pretty. It's got that fold over latch. All the rhinestones are there. Did a filigree design to it. Some AB rhinestones. But not signed. So I couldn't find any information on that one. And that can be a pendant or a brooch. This one is a uh, Ruby Road. this uh, lucky brand bracelet with the interesting clip <laughs> this is one not signed has a beautiful gold tone to it and red like almost like an orangey red and it has a shepherd hook clasp this one is really fun it's manatees isn't that cute that's a unique find a little copper cuff bracelet this is beautiful Got a good spring to it. Love that. Quite a bit of Chico's this weekend, which I love to see. Pretty blue, like an illusion wire. This one right here is a Chico's as well, but he's buried, so it's going to take me a minute to get to that one. These are heavy. Got a nice tribal design to it. I don't always come across shoe clips, but... These ones particularly stood out. The rhinestone bling is always a nice thing to add, especially around Easter. Lots of little flower rhinestone necklaces. Very pretty. I came across one of these last week in a different shape. So here's another one of those. A little picture frame brooch.
This one's not signed. But it's got all its rhinestones and pearls uh, alternating. So I grabbed it. With Easter and weddings and prom coming up. Definitely uh, blingy stuff is sought after. This is a stretch without the elastic. <laughs> Rhinestones all around, they're all intact. This one has a pretty box clasp. Black faceted beading. It's a simple necklace, but very pretty, elegant. This is a really fun one. It's got the black metal uh, throughout and a mixture of uh, wood and leather and um, glass beading. Looking for some very intricate uh, pieces. It kind of has like a, a fall coloring scheme to it. This one is marked Japan. I grabbed this one because of the glass beading and the seed beads. Pretty vibrant red. This one um, had some very interesting information, but no one seems to know much about them. Um, they have that triangular pattern. This uh, maker's mark, or what I think might be a maker's mark, is uh, an unusual thing. If you know anything about it, please let me know. I couldn't quite find anything um, other than one that said it was made by Sergio, one said it was Turkish. So if you know anything about this particular bracelet, let me know, because I do not know. But I'm definitely interested in learning more. I'm always interested in learning more. This is a Chico's. Very pretty, um, vibrant color beading. It's got rhinestone beading in there as well. Definitely my favorite Chico's of this week. <laughs> and then we have this one with the um, shepherd hook. Multi-layer wavy beading with the green faceted beading. Thank you for joining me this week for another sourcing video. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, make sure you check out my Whatnot. If you haven't joined Whatnot yet, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It's really a lot of great options for finding cheap, inexpensive goodies. And you can totally make profit without even leaving, leaving your living room. Just a thought. Thank you. Until next time.